During our visit to the Pacific Coast last week, we saw how goods, including soybeans, reach international buyers overseas. Both the Port of Tacoma and the Port of Grays Harbor are owned by taxpayers in their respective counties. Companies like AGP, Cargill and CHS then use terminals in the ports to ship their grain to customers in the east. As you'll see in our reporting from there, the ships in the waters along the west coast are helping farmers in Nebraska fields market their products in homes and stores across the ocean. For many Nebraska soybeans, the ride ends here, half a country away from the fields they were grown in. Grays Harbor and Tacoma, two major shipping ports for goods moving to China, Japan, and other countries in the Pacific Rim. On a see-for-yourself trip to the Washington coast, these Nebraska producers got a glimpse of equipment and machinery used to supply customers with their soybeans. You know, we, ha we have nothing to relate to, really, to compare it to, so that's why it is helpful to see it firsthand because you can't really compare it to anything. Big cranes and bigger ships move millions of dollars worth of soybeans through these ports each year. At the port of Tacoma, over 200 million bushels of grain were sold in 2010 for a total of $861 million. How it's done would be a logistical nightmare for some. Soybeans from the Midwest travel on rails of both BNSF and UP to the ports where they're unloaded into storage or straight into ships. Actually, it's more than I thought. It's much more. I didn't realize they moved as many ships out a month as they do. Grace Harbor fills two to three vessels each month, mainly with soybean meal, a lot of it from Nebraska. The Tacoma Export Marketing Company, or TEMCO, loads 10 ships a month. To fill a Panamax ship, the largest ship able to travel through the Panama Canal, it takes about 600 cars. Lined up, 600 rail cars would stretch nearly seven miles. Tim Bartek of Ithaca says that kind of efficiency is necessary to move the growing amount of grain farmers are now producing. So that surplus don't get to a certain point where it hurts our prices and, and you know, in the end hurts our bottom line. Soybeans and soybean meal can travel in Panamax ships by bulk, but ships can also carry containers filled with different forms of soybeans. The Port of Tacoma hauled over a million and a half of these containers in 2010 alone. On the day we were at McMillan Piper, workers were loading soybean flakes from rail cars into containers. Eventually, the containers will reach Japan, where they'll be used in baby formula. Madison farmer and lead program graduate Neil Neidig says the trip answered his questions about shipping via bulk and container. I thought honestly before I came that the container program from what we learned when I was in lead in, over in China that containers, a lot of them go back empty and I'm thinking why can't we put grain in it. Honestly for us in the Midwest as soybean and corn producers, Panamax shipping is probably the way to go. Containers are more of a niche market, which is not bad. It's probably, it can't handle the volume that they need or we want to get, we want to sell. This was a different view for many farmers. They see the seed before it goes into the ground and the end result when it's harvested in the fall. But these ports are the final domestic destination before soybeans reach buyers overseas. I think the biggest thing to see out of it is uh, where they finally end up and how they get here. When we hear the backlogs of our local elevators, a lot of people don't know where they do end up. They hear stories of where it's going but they don't know the whole system and how it works. I think going on this tour gives me an idea. I can see the front to end. We kind of get stuck in our own little corner of the world and not sure uh, what happens to our products when we take them to town. Uh, we raise the soybeans, we take them to town and kind of don't really know what they're used for or where they go. So it's neat to kind of see uh, who's buying our soybeans, what they're using them for, um, how they're shipped. It's uh, been really interesting. Shipping to those buyers differs from port to port. The Port of Tacoma says it takes a ship around 14 days to reach Japan, a few days longer than in the past as captains are opting to move slower and save fuel. 95% of Tacoma's beans travel to China at a clip of about 15 days per trip. That's two to three days faster than it would take from a port in New Orleans. Because of these ports in Washington, Agriculture is now a huge part of the Pacific Northwest's economy, especially locally. Grays Harbor says its ports account for about 20 percent of the county's employment base. The Port of Tacoma says its activities contribute $90 million a year in state and local taxes. You think about it back home, but you don't think about it on this end about how much business it actually does for, for the exporting business. So how, much, how many other jobs are involved? The amount of longshoremen and, and everybody else that are working out here to, to get that stuff 
out of the country. These Nebraska farmers support their state's soybean checkoff, which in turn helps promote Nebraska soybean use in international markets. It also aims to support better soybean transportation options and availability and sales of soybeans to markets in Southeast and East Asia, among others key buyers for these shipping ports on the coast. It's nice to know, to see what our checkoff dollars are going to and to see that, that they're developing them and, it, and it's, it's definitely building infrastructure out here and uh, it's obviously creating a heck of a good market for our Nebraska soybeans. After seeing how their soybeans arrive here, a long ride from the middle of the country, these farmers now head home at the beginning of another planting season. This time, though, with more knowledge of where the products of seeds soon to be planted will eventually end up. To load the ships we saw in Washington, the ports are using fast-moving conveyor belts to carry grain and soybean meal from storage or rail cars to the ship. Temco has two conveyor systems that can each carry 40,000 bushels of grain per hour. Temco has also taken measures to ensure they can load ships during the rain. They've installed a roof to cover ships and ensure workers continue loading instead of waiting for rain to clear.